Today's a pretty exciting day. We got the wing kit here, and I'm also stoked. You know what that is? That's the tail wheel. We are building an RV14 tail dragger, and it's coming together. The quick build wing and finishing kits arrive. We get a bunch of building done, and the pre closure inspection happens. Let's get into it. Surprise! It's an airplane! Yahoo! Got a canopy? Yeah. Holy crap. So as it seems to be the case with all these build vlogs, I'm trying constantly to catch up. But we're getting closer to real time with this one. So we got the canopy, we got the wings, and the finishing kit being inventoried over there. We gotta do this stuff and make sure they all have labels. So it'll be a little bit of time lapses and quick montages to catch us up and then some real time process stuff with the build. Okay, so we've inventoried the finishing kit and we're closing the box up because we're not gonna need that for a little while, but that's the main thing is once you receive something, you gotta do the inventory, make sure everything's there and you're familiar with all the parts. One of the biggest challenges with this project is that the guys are on their own to film what they can while I'm gone. And you got a huge wide angle, so you just talk Amazon to build this piece. And then you can just set up the frame that you want with it. And for the most part, they were able to capture some really great stuff when I couldn't be there. Here we are making a uh, paint booth to uh, paint the interior of the cabin, which is now on end, just to give us better access in here. Such as setting up the temporary paint booth for the fuselage, which was a little bit too big to easily move over to the permanent paint booth, which you might remember from the previous episode where we had a bit of a priming fiasco. This is right. This is terrible. It's so dusty. The painter extraordinaire. <laughs> <laughs> what a joke, yeah. Okay, so now we're getting ready to uh, paint the interior of the aft fuselage. So we got it uh, in the paint booth. So this uh, this area here, this area here needs to be painted because it'll be visible from the interior uh, from the cockpit. Once again, we have the master painter at work. So I apologize for jumping around a little bit. We're about to catch up to stuff that I was able to shoot, but I really do appreciate the hard work the guys were able to do to keep filming while they were getting so much building done. Now well, we're done painting, we're ready to assemble. Are we, is this, is this being filmed right now, John? Yeah. I mean, I'm a filmmaker by trade. And I still struggled with figuring out how to film and build at the same time. So understandably, the guys had a little bit of a learning curve to shoot. And when I went to pick up the November footage, there were about 10,000 still images because they'd accidentally shot time-lapse while connecting the tail to the fuselage. But honestly, this build vlog is not about capturing every step in real time as it plays out. That would be impossible. What we're doing here is trying to give you a taste of what it's like to build an airplane. So we're sharing as many tidbits as we can, but we can't shoot everything. But feel free to ask if there's something you'd like to learn about. Was the camera rolling or not? It's, it was rolling at the last minute. We want to put it back up. November 15th, the, uh, the fuselage comes down to floor level. We kept the shipping supports on there and we just made some little feet so that, uh, so that the fuse would be off the ground. So we're supporting it from the front and from the back. From the back, we just made a little kind of a sawhorse. So next step is uh, in inspection of rivets, which is coming... Uh... Uh, November 21st, we have Mac inspecting. Yeah, so uh, Mac is every single rivet we put in, he's, he's looking at every one of them. So this is a pretty big milestone. It's the pre-closure inspection, and the next one will be the final inspection. It's all good? Canada, great day. <laughs> <laughs> They're perfect. They're perfect. So Perry, after these pass, we're okay to close them up and finish them off? Yep. Yep. Once, uh, once the pre-closure inspection is done, 
We'll be able to uh, finish them up. Uh, we'll probably test fit them to the airplane and then uh, take them back off, put them away, and the, the next time they'll come is final assembly. So there's a lot to this, and obviously we can't cover all of it, but Mac did find a few things that we're going to need to address and fix. Okay, so uh, we're looking at the horizontal stab. There it is right there. And uh, although this build has been perfect, it's, uh, we can't say that anymore because uh, it's not quite perfect because our inspector actually found one rivet. If you look real close, you can see that there is a crack in the dimple on that one rivet. It's right in the very nose of the horizontal stab. Uh, the fix is simple. We're just going to uh, uh, double up uh, the sheet metal in this area right here, uh, dimple it, and then so we'll actually sister that dimple and uh, put another rivet in it, and uh, we'll be as good as new. Perry went over another fairly simple thing with me when I was back later that week. All right, so this is easy. Uh, we gotta provide drainage for the elevator and uh, the stabilizers. And the reason for that is water could accumulate in both those flying surfaces and affect the weight and balance, of course. And uh, <clears throat> it's just a matter of drilling three 30 second holes in the lowest point. Uh -huh. So I'm not sure if that will be- uh, oh, You wait until it's installed so you know? Oh uh, yeah, that'll happen right at the end. So my guess is, since this is a tail dragger, it'll it'll be in this bottom corner right here. Yeah. And because uh, there's like no dehedral there, so it's not like the yeah, inside so will be a lower. Maybe maybe two makes sense. One on this corner, one in the far corner. Just don't, in case you have a part crooked one day and yeah, it freezes don't know inside. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's that. And after reviewing the rest of the inspection notes, Perry caught me up on where we were at with the build so I could get to work. You gotta cut that off yeah. uh, to accommodate the tail spring, right? Yeah. So uh, you gotta, gotta make a patch, so that's done. But anyway, I don't wanna touch that until you know exactly what tail light you're gonna use. Yeah, we've got a pretty awesome plan for the lighting figured out. More on that soon. Uh, in order to make this part fit, uh, to the to the wing portion up here I had to build this up a little bit and shape it properly with some west system and uh, this is the uh, bottom of the rudder so the kit comes with a, uh, a little instruction on how to cut the piece of plastic out of there and put this flat in there so that it doesn't hit the tail wheel uh, strut a really cool side effect of what we're doing here is how much the community has been involved. Now this is by no means a paid product placement, but I thought this was pretty cool. So he just sent you these uh, yeah, to try out? that's awesome. So I'll give him a little shout out. Oh, I love working with small companies that have cool ideas. The story goes he got tired of his tools sliding off the, uh, the oh, jet cool. while he was working, and we all did at some point. Um, so this conforms to any, basically any surface. So you just like put it even in the weirdest spots. Very cool. When I did my annual, I, all the fasteners go in there. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm proud. Ken did not lose them. What some people think is a silly idea and it'll never take off. He's yeah. just, yeah. he's come such a long way. But do you need an F-16 for it to use these? Or can you use them on any? Yeah, yeah. I'm just glad to be able to be here. It's been a month of standby for that instrument flight test. That's good. That was That's a tiring good. month, man. So if you missed it, I got the instrument rating finally finished at the beginning of the year. And then I was able to actually start focusing more on this build. So this catches us up to January 2020, and we're almost back to real time. Want to describe what we're doing? I thought you knew. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the trick on it was to get the canopy not only flat against the roll bar, but up flat against the underside of the skins back here. Right. And so the instructions on that page, you've got to really uh, pay attention to them. As, as you progressively uh, attach the uh, canopy to the roll bar and to the skins back here, you have to keep pushing back on the back corners of here. You have to keep pushing it back, and that, that forces it up against the inside of the skin. That, that's really the trick to it. Okay, so that's as far as we can go on that side. All right, so now Steve is on this side. So Pete, do you mind just like holding this camera while I just go through the process with this one? It's a wide lens, it's on autofocus. All right, cool. Okay. Okay, so I'm just kind of widening the hole after the initial, what, I guess you call it the pilot hole or the first yeah, one? Yeah, the pilot hole, yep. Yeah. So make sure I'm real straight. All right, and we got our uh, Tim Hortons coupon that we're just using to kind of 
get the shavings out in between. And we're vacuuming as well just to be thorough. And then the uh, threading. Is that what we call it? This is what do you call this? Tap. The tap. It's tap. Yep. So the tap is creating the thread. So Six thirty two tap. So I thought the excess. Look at that nice and straight. And just comment, it's got to go in perpendicular to four yeah. and a half. And so a couple turns. That lens is pretty wide, but does it see the, do you see the plastic building up? You might not be able to get too much closer. Is it showing up? It's a pretty uh, high resolution. Zoom in on it. I can, because it's 4K. But do you see the, the plastic building up? You got a good shot of it. Yeah. So we just turn it. Like what, a three quarter turn type thing and then back a half? To break the chips. Yeah. It's going in nice and square from this perspective. Uh, GoPro. <clears throat> GoPro died, that's fine. Very nice, very nice. Not through yet. Still, still getting a good bite. Okay, so there it got easy, so that means I'm all the way through, and then just back it off. Perfect. <coughs> Perfect. And then this one's standing by to be countersunk. And then do the next one. Cool. All right, thanks, man. I think that covered it. Eh? We get all the steps. I think we did, right? Well, the rest of the steps actually involve taking the window off, opening up the holes with a number 27 drill on the plexi, and then cleaning up the edges. As you can see, there's a countersink, but you can also see that the edges are sharp. So what we need to do now is bevel them to a 45. And uh, don't just do a linear motion like this. It's got to be a scrubbing motion like this because you'll just wear the sandpaper out in a real fine line that won't cut anymore. So I spent the rest of my night getting friendly with the edges of the rear window. Those guys are working on uh, mosquito. Yeah, the radiators for the mosquito. So I hope you enjoyed that one. Something I plan to cover more in future episodes is a little bit more about what's happening in this awesome hangar. And we're still working toward getting more community members out to visit and be a part of this build. And I need to get out and film with other builders on their builds. So lots of great stuff coming with this series. Hi, Mom. <laughs> yeah, so it's November 13th and uh, we're recording a special, most important part of the build, lunchtime. <laughs> and there's a bagel.